we've got a 1956 Morris Minor Matilda 800cc um, red interior it's very old very tired looking and we've been tasked to do our job restore um, the two front seats and uh, the back seats here and um, yeah it's very similar in color it's very similar to um, a, a recent Bentley job that we did I don't know if you guys watched that um, but if you have you'd be able to tell that it's very very similar very close uh, and the condition also is very similar but there's a major difference and one major difference is that the Bentley uh, interior was genuine leather whereas this one here is vinyl right and how can you tell so um, if I show you whoop, if I show you the back of this bench here, you can see the underside of the material. And just here, you can see this is, for starters, it's very, very thin in comparison to genuine leather. And the underside of the material here, this has just got a fabric backing to it, whereas genuine leather would have the suede backing to it. So this here is genuine leather, right? So from the Bentley bit, right? And that's your suede at the back whereas if you compare that to this bit here and perhaps you want to zoom in here just so you can see um for yourself very clearly where it's it's in comparison it's it's so much thinner right and it literally just has a fabric backing to it right so hopefully that's clear but what does that mean right um it basically means that on the bentley where we used liquor oil to soften the leather first um, that is all things that we can do with genuine leather, but with vinyl, there's a lot of limitations and restrictions. The liquor oil is just not going to have any effect on it. So we're not going to be able to, you know, adjust um, the touch of the, the material as much. But um, aesthetically, we can make this look pretty much brand new. But I don't know how it's going to turn out. Um, you know, um, I'm hoping because this is really dry, um, but I'm hoping that it'll, look, it'll definitely look a lot better. But it's just the question is, how well can we get it to feel, right? And that's gonna be the main challenge with this. We might use a certain um, additive called a soft slip, um, but I haven't quite decided yet. I think we're gonna start with the job and then um, decide as we go along. So let's carry on. All right, so step one is, there's a lot of loose dust on here, right? So I'm just gonna grab um, a clean, dry cloth and just give this a wipe down. Right, there's a lot of dust coming off it, right? So, um, let's go do that very quickly. Right, and obviously it's become apparent now that there is um, a damage there. There's a tear across here. Uh, it's just so dry, it's unbelievable. Um, same here, so we're gonna have to put a backing cloth, fill it and repair it. We're gonna come to that later, right? But step one here, it's just to give this whole thing a real good clean. I'm tempted to think this is the true colour, um, so that's what we're going to try and match the paint to, um, because this part here looks a lot more vibrant compared to any other part on the on the whole interior. So I've dusted the seats down, and now it's time to give these all a good clean. And to do that, I'm going to use a colour brush and. The strong leather cleaner. The strong leather cleaner is a water-based cleaner, but is a higher strength cleaner and has a very, very good cleaning action. This should make this look a lot cleaner and allow us to really see the, the actual state of the seat. Right? So let's get going. Good enough the bottle here. I'm gonna start with that. Okay, so we've just finished cleaning the seats and as you can see, it's starting to show, a lot of the imperfections are starting to show through a lot more now. Um, obviously this damage was obvious even from the beginning, but you know you can see that it's gonna need a backing cloth underneath, it's gonna need to be filled, um, the same across here as well, um, it's gonna need to be filled. But then, you know, all across here, all this area, there's just a lot of cracks that, that will also need to be sort of degreased, sanded down, filled, 
um, and then moving across to the next seat here this looks like this was uh, well, this is the driver's seat because um, it's had a lot more wear coming into this area here right cracks across here right, the, the one's just sort of literally crackled all across here lots of cracks there there's a bit of paint here as well that's the that the, the strong cleaner didn't didn't sort of remove so we're gonna have to use a solvent based product to to remove that um, sand all of this down fill it the back benches believe it or not not that bad at all but um, some parts have removed um, a lot of the color that's come off on some of the other parts just with cleaning you can see the difference I mean that was the the original true color it's a it's like a vibrant cherry red color whereas down here it's almost sort of brown orangey sort of color so I think that is the true color because that matches the back of the seats as well so that's what we're going to mix to and um, and we're going to spray this but um, this was just to show you how just a very good clean can start showing um, the actual state of the seat so we can now decide how we want to proceed how we want to move forward so the next step is going to be to degrease all of this and sand all of this down so let me just start with that so step one is oh sorry not step one step one was cleaning but in this case now what i'm going to do is just use the color solid cleaner to degrease this very very well right and i'm now i'm going to need a fair amount of product because this is quite um greasy as well so I'm just going to start with this one here and I'm pretty sure that this is also going to remove quite a lot of paint and dirt as well um, and grease that's sort of stuck on the surface you can see that there straight away all right so I'm just going to wipe all of this down Prep part is crucial when it comes to making sure that we get a really, really good finish, right? So degreasing the seat thoroughly, you know, all um, all the way through, even certain parts that are not easy to get to. Just make sure you, you get all the way in, degrease it very, very well, because that's going to make sure that the paint is going to bond to the surface very well. And the prep is always uh, one of the most important things, but quite often the one that is most neglected and the least amount of time is spent on prep. So if you can take time and make sure you spend enough time on the prep, getting um, the degreasing and the cleaning and the sanding and everything done very well, that will all add to the quality of the repair. So we carry on here to the next seat. Right, okay, so now I'm just gonna sand the leather or the vinyl. In this case, there's a lot of rough areas all across here um, and sand is just gonna make this nice and smooth, right? Um, and I'm gonna go in circular motion to make sure that I'm removing enough. So much smoother already. Let me just give that a wipe so you guys can see clearly what I'm on about. Right, so you can see now that that's a lot smoother. Of course, the cracks are a little bit deep, so it's going to require a little bit of filler anyway. But um, as soon as we get that done, this area should look a lot better. But that's what I'm going to do now. So the next step is just to sand all these seats thoroughly, remove all the hard spots, the heavy spots, um, and get these feeling nice and smooth again. All right, so away we go. Okay, so I've finished sanding this whole seat here and this feels so much softer and nice already. This has made a huge difference. Um, it's act it actually feels a lot better than what I thought it would. Um, I was under the impression that we probably have to use some additives to make it um, feel and touch softer. 
um, but that is I don't think that's going to be necessary because the sanding itself has made a huge improvement so um, that was on this seat I've got the rest to carry on um, and I'm sure that these also will come out really really nice so let me just keep going on that Right, so what I'm doing here is just cutting the backing cloth for this repair here, right? So obviously here you can see it's torn all the way through and just gluing this and filling is not gonna work um, because I think the filler will just, the filler needs somewhere to stay. So what we're doing here is just cutting this piece of cloth, right? And we're gonna cut this slightly larger than the size of the hole, place that on the inside and this cloth actually has a layer of glue on it already. So you can see this here is um, the side which has, um, hasn't got any glue on it. And this bit here does, because it's got the slightly shinier look to it. So once I place this underneath, I'm just gonna heat this with a bit of heat gun and that will activate the glue, allowing me to just stick all these parts directly onto this. And then we can go ahead and fill the other areas, right? So. So I'm going to do this is slightly still too big, so I'm just going to cut this, trim this down a little bit. And it helps to make it into a circular shape just because it doesn't have any sharp corners that way. So you can do a square as well, but I just found that the circular shape tends to blend in a lot easier. All right. In. It's just still too big because it's going to catch at the other end, so I'm going to trim it down again. These edges do are quite sharp, so I'm going to push this in first, and I may have to cut some of these bit out as well because there's no way these are going to stick and stay flush. So um, let me just try and put that in first. Now I'm just going to grab the heat gun and stick all of this in place and then we can fill the gaps. Right, so for this hole here, it's obviously just too small to get a patch underneath. Um, so what I'm gonna try and do is just use a product called the leather and plastic paste, which looks like that, right? And I'm just gonna use on top of that to set the, the, the filler. I'm gonna heat the grain patch. This is not an accurate grain patch, but it's so tiny that it doesn't matter. It closely resembles the grain that's on there. So um, hopefully that should work. So I'm just gonna try that now. So for that, just cover the, the area completely. Just remove the excess around it so you don't want to grain any other surrounding areas. I've just got some solvent cleaner here just to get rid of the excess residue of the product that's around it. Right, and I'm then gonna just heat this. flex it and yeah that's it's gonna hold it should look pretty good okay so we've got two more holes of this type here that we're gonna fix using the same method and 
in this case, because we've got a huge lump of filler, I want to make sure that the heat travels all the way through. If I just heat this and put that on top, the top layer will set, but underneath it all, it's not going to set all the way through. So I'm just going to blow some heat over the, over the filler to make sure that the heat's traveled all the way down and then hit that on top with, with the drain. So here I'm just going to tint the filler, so I'm taking a few drops of paint and then with that I'll put in some of our leather filler and that's just to hide the contrast from the white filler. If we can tint it that'll just make it easier for us in the subsequent process and tinting the filler helps massively when it comes to applying the paint makes life so much easier you have to apply a lot less layers of paint and overall it just makes the job easy and looks quite nice as well i think i've probably got too much paint in here there we go. so this isn't too bad at all Right, and then just apply the filler. Start with this corner here. It doesn't need a lot of filler, it's just to take the deeper cracks out so you've just got to feel for the cracks that feel quite deep and just fill those areas so you don't fill around it too much so this bit here feels deep so i'm just going to go for a bit of filler there otherwise just going to scrape the excess off very quickly same here What's this bit here Okay, so we've we filled everywhere yesterday. Um, as you can see now, the filler is completely dry and set. And there's obviously, as the filler is dried, there's quite a lot of rough spots. There's a, there's a fair amount of excess filler, especially on this big crack here. There's quite a lot of filler that I'm gonna have to sand down and remove. But when it comes to sanding, we can't dry sand this filler, right? Just dry sanding is not gonna work, right? It needs a special solvent that softens the filler down, and that product's called the GLD solvent. So what I'm gonna do is just get some solvent onto the, onto the sanding pad, apply that, and then gently start sanding, right? So I'm gonna apply a little bit there, across there, right? And with this solvent, you've just gotta wait for it to dry because it goes really tacky and sticky, right? So just wait for that tackiness to go away, which it will do as the product evaporates um, and then gently start sanding, right? So I've applied a little bit everywhere and go across on this side here as well. And you don't have to apply it with the sanding pad. You can apply it using a cloth as well, but this method I feel is quite, quite easy. Um, and also make sure that you don't apply too much of the solvent so you're not removing more than, more than necessary. So just got to do that. And now let's just look at the other side where we've applied the solvent, which should be dry, so we can start sanding that bit. 
just wrap this up and tuck it now. So that's smooth enough. There's these areas here where I am going to have to put or apply more filler, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to carry on with this, apply um, the primer, apply the first layer of paint, and, and then it'll become very clear the exact areas that need more filling. So rather than just keep on applying more filler, I suggest apply the base layer of, uh, apply the initial layer of filler, and once you've done that, sanded it down, just move on to the painting process. And then once you've put that first layer of paint, it'll show through the exact areas that need some top up filler. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so with the bulk of the filling work done, we're now gonna move on to the paint stage and the, the finishing stage, which involves spraying a layer of primer, followed by the paint, and then the clear coat. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray the primer, spray the paint, and then revisit all these areas where we filled to see if we need to top up some filler and adjust the repair to make it look more, um, much better, basically. Um, aesthetically, I'm pretty sure this area here, we are gonna have to make some adjustments. There's a couple of other parts on, a um, couple of other bits on uh, the back bench as well, which is gonna need some adjustment. But rather than waste time and trying to make it perfect right now, what I suggest is we start, get on with the primer, put that first layer of paint, that will make it very, very clear um, and show us exactly where we need to fill. So that's what we're gonna do now, onto the primer. So the primer that we've got is a clear primer. It's basically just an adhesion promoter. Just make sure that the paint layer is gonna to bond to the surface very well. So you don't need to spray a huge amount of primer, just a very thin layer, a mist, a dust coat, um, in most cases is enough, right? So if you do spray too much and if you've got a lot of primer dripping from the top down, if you've got a lot of runs, just grab a sponge, dab it out or use a heat gun to just you know, um, get rid of um, the runs before you apply the paint. Right. Okay, so we've got the paint mixed up here. Now, if this was genuine leather, this paint is ready to spray on, but because this is vinyl, we're going to add um, an additive to it called the crosslinker. You can think of it as a hardener. Um, and because this is vinyl, we're going to need to add this just to make the whole repair more durable and for the paint to stick, right? Now, how much of this crosslinker should we add? Right, we've, we're going to aim for about 250 mil of paint, 2% of hardener in the paint. So that's going to roughly be about five mil, right? So I'm just going to give this a good shake and open the can up i've got a little this thing comes with a little syringe you can see the graduations on here so it shows about five mils so i'm going to take a full scoop out some product and just add that in there is that done put that on the side this away and now I'll just give this Good mix. Once I've done that, I'm just gonna use a paint filter. 
place that on top here and just decap this into this thing there. And it's very crucial to filter this because um, it, it it's a hardener, so it you know it forms small crystals in there, and that can clog up your gun. So for best results, um, just make sure you filter it. Obviously, our spray gun has a, a built-in filter into it, but I just want to make sure that I don't have any clogging issues when I'm spraying. So I'm just filtering it as we go. Should be pretty good for now. Let that filter out through here. And now this mixture is ready to go into the gun and we can start spraying. Okay, so we've put the first few layers of paint, we've done um, quite a lot of filling work obviously before we put the paint on, but now it's become very obvious certain areas that need more filler, so that's what we're going to do. So this area here, right, this little crack here, we're going to refill again, and of course the, the main areas where there were some tears, they need to be fixed some more and need, need more filling, so that's what, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to start with this one here first. Um, and just fill that up. Okay, so we've finally finished topping up filler on this area here and various other places where it needed a bit more filler just to cover up those final cracks. We've sprayed uh, a little bit more paint on top of the filler, of course, after sanding it all down and everything. And we've now got the finished product. Now this looks so much better than what they were. Uh, and all that's left now for us to do is to spray some clear coat on here. And we've mixed an 80-20 mix of clear coat. So 80% gloss, 20% amount just to give it a little bit of shine, I think. And um, that's what this car needs. Um, a slightly higher gloss than what most modern cars are made of. I'm gonna spray two layers of that, and then that should be the job done. All that would be left is probably to apply uh, a care product like the Elephant Leather Preserver. Now this is vinyl, so that product isn't really gonna benefit the material, but just to bring the touch of the material back, just the, uh, the touch of the surface gotta feel nice, and that's why I'm gonna apply that product. But before we get onto that, let's do the clear cut. So two layers, one horizontal, one vertical, and that should be us. Well then guys, so we're finally done with the full interior on this one here. As you can see, 
it looks so much better than what it was before. Um, I remember this being all patchy, two-tone, um, there was a huge tear and a rip here as well. Um, we fixed those two areas, but you know, there, there is a scar. You can still tell that um, there was something wrong there. Uh, but but you know the whole the whole surface is a lot more reinforced now. It should be a lot more durable. You know, so this should be this should be absolutely fine. And looks wise as well, it looks so much better. The color is a very very good match. It looks revived, and uh, it looks like a, a, a well aged old car seat um, which is what I think um, we were going for given that this is a 65 year old car so um, yeah I'm very pleased with the way it's turned out I hope you guys love the video as well let us know what you think of the feedback and the comment section and uh, make sure you give this video a like